So one of the reasons I love studying planetary motion is all of the conservation laws that you can demonstrate. We've already looked at uh, conservation of energy and how that comes up clearly in planetary motion. We've also looked at conservation of angular momentum and how that comes up. There's actually a third quantity that it's conserved in planetary motion called the Laplace Runge lens vector, named after the three folks who, uh, who developed, discovered this vector, discovered that it was a conserved quantity. And this vector, hereafter the LRL vector, is given by this construction here. It's the linear momentum crossed with the angular momentum minus the orbiting object's mass times this constant k. The k is, uh, is everything that goes into the force law other than one over r squared. So in this case, it's the gravitation constant g, the mass of the planet times the mass of the star. So this m is gonna get squared because you have two of the mass of the planets, times r hat, the unit vector that goes from the origin, from the, from the orbiting, from the central body here out to the orbiting body. And of course, as a physicist, I look at this thing and say, oh yeah, of course this thing is conserved. This is the Laplace Runge lens vector. This is a vector I use every day. No, not really. This thing doesn't have, at least as far as I can tell, a straightforward physical interpretation. Apparently, um, it just kind of pops out of the problem as a conserved quantity if you do some group theory stuff, which I am a little bit rusty on. Um, but this is something we can add to our uh, planetary motion code. And that's what I've done over here. Um, I've reduced it down to a single planet because I, I don't think this works if you've got multiple planets. I haven't tried that yet. If I try it, it works, I'll make a video about it. If not, um, then there won't be a video about that. Uh, but we've got our star, we've got our singular planet here, and we've added on a calculation for the LRL vector. And I'm using a, a pretty new command to me, a, a command that is pretty new to me, um, the attach arrow function in vPython, which will take an arrow, attach it to object planet one, and associate it with the LRL attribute that the planet one has. And so all we have to do to update this green arrow is update the LRL. We don't actually have to do anything to this arrow. It's just going to uh, automatically update that arrow for us. So here we're calculating the Laplace Runge lens vector. Um, so as a reminder, it is P cross L minus M K R hat. So we come over here. Uh, we've got a scale factor out here. That's just so that it points uh, within the screen and doesn't point, you know, way off the screen. So here we've got our planet's linear momentum. That's on the left-hand side of the first cross product. So we're going to cross that with the angular momentum. Now I haven't bothered calculating the angular momentum here, so I'm going to have to add that in which is of course this cross product of the position with the linear momentum. So linear momentum is showing up here twice. So we've got momentum cross position cross momentum with the position cross momentum in parentheses here. Um, that's legal, that's an okay thing to do. Um, in fact, it, it's guaranteed to work out fine because this first cross product here, this interior cross product is going to give us a vector that's perpendicular to the momentum. So when we cross it with the momentum, it, it'll give us a nice vector. It won't give us zero. At least it shouldn't. Um, I, I can't think of a scenario in which that would give us zero. And then we subtract off from here this extra little piece. So we've got the planet mass squared, again, because we've got planet mass times the k factor. So the k factor is gravitation constant g, which we've set to one for simplicity. We've got the star mass, and then we've got the, uh, the, the unit vector for planet one's position. So when we press control two to run, this will give us a green vector that follows the Laplace Runge lens vector. And that's a pretty constant looking vector. It's pointing in constant direction. I believe that's a constant magnitude. We could graph the magnitude if you wanted to, just to double check it, but that's pretty constant. Um, and of course that's gonna change with the initial conditions of the system, just like the energy and the angular momentum do. So let's try changing a few of the uh, initial conditions here. Uh, this was a, a distance of 1.2. Let's try 1.0, like my little note here tells me to do. And what you notice is the LRL vector is pointing in the opposite direction that it was before. Last time it was pointing constantly to the right, now it's pointing constantly to the left. Which means we can find an initial distance, an initial uh, x-coordinate for the position, where this LRL vector is zero. So while that first part I don't think can be zero, the whole thing can come out to be zero because it's one thing minus another thing. So somewhere in there is a transition point where those two pieces of the LRL vector 
uh, cancel each other. Speaking of those two pieces, why don't we add some additional arrows to examine those two pieces? So we, we need to add a couple other things here. Let's add P cross L, the linear momentum crossed with the angular momentum. Let's have that vector zero, zero, zero. It doesn't really matter what it starts out as it's gonna automatically update to the thing that we need it to. Uh, and then let's make a thing called MKR hat equal vector zero, zero, zero. There we go. And actually let's, hmm, let's do this. Let's, let's always make that the negative of it. Yes, yeah, so let's have that be negative MKR hat. Because um, obviously I can't have a negative sign as part of a variable name. And so here we'll just do the same thing where we attach the arrow, copy and paste, paste. So here we'll look for the PXL and the negative MKR hat. Oh, and I should make these different colors, right? So let's make red plus blue going to give me green. Okay. And down here, we just have to make our other updates. It should be pretty straightforward. I should just have to copy and paste. And I want this to be linear momentum cross angular momentum. That's this first piece. So I can delete the second piece. Very good. Now copy and paste again. This is going to be my negative MKR hat. And now I just get rid of the first piece. And I have a negative MKR hat. Let's put that negative out in front front just to uh, avoid any issues there. All right, so this will now give us three vectors to represent um, those two pieces. So again, it's, it's going to be red plus blue equals green. Oh, wow, that does not work out well in terms of the scale factor at all. I can see how they, how they nearly cancel each other. Um, I need a better scale factor for that. Let's call that scale. Let's call this one scale two. Let's see, I need that to be probably about 10 times as, or 10 times smaller or, or one tenth the size. Uh, so let's call that scale two, scale two and control two. Okay, cool. So let's see, which one is the blue one? The blue one is the MKR hat. So that's always going to point inward, right? This one's always going to point outward, but that inward and outward are varying slightly to always give this thing uh, uh, an, an outward, a, a leftward direction, the green one. Um, it looks like the red one kind of points crooked compared to the blue one. Uh, let's try flipping it around to that original initial condition uh, so we can watch the crossover point. Where did my, oh, I scrolled right past it. Uh, here's our initial conditions. Let's change that back to a 1.2. Again, red plus blue equals green. Yeah, so the, blue is winning out slightly over the red this time. Last time the red was winning out slightly over the blue. It's hard to tell. I think that red one is not quite anti-parallel to the blue one. Let's make this orbit a little bit more eccentric. Let's try 35 for the momentum. Yeah, so I've got a much more uh, distorted orbit here. Um, I'll need to rescale the green one, but I can tell that the red and blue are definitely not always anti-parallel to each other. Um, let's scale down that green one a little bit. So I need to scale down the green. Uh, maybe I make them both three times 10 to the minus seven now. Okay, that's a little bit too small. But yeah, you can definitely tell it's not necessarily 180 degrees between red and blue. So those can have, um, I don't know if there's a restriction on the angle they can have, but it looks like the LRL vector uh, is always going to point left or right, at least in this scenario. That's probably set up by the initial condition. That's my guess for that. But yeah, these don't have to be 180 degrees apart, so that's pretty cool. So there you have it, a visualization of the Laplace Runga lens vector. Um, you might have seen that in a physics textbook at some point, but there it is, the green vector there. That's how you can visualize that. Um, if you find a, a another cool way to, to visualize this, let me know in the comments below, or if you know of a, uh, of a good physical interpretation for the LRL vector, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.